Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, I just wanted to talk to you about the new Ma Apple Mac OS devices and what they mean for running virtual machines. So in my, a lot of my classes, uh, my students will oftentimes uh, need to set up a local virtual machine to either test out a new operating system, maybe test out a new piece of software, learn about cybersecurity, or about networking. So there's a lot of really good uh, reasons why you might want to run a local virtual machine. Um, and typically in the past, I could say, you know, go off and grab, you know, a nice laptop from Best Buy or Amazon or wherever, and you'll probably be in pretty good shape. Now, most operating systems up until recently would typically run on an x86 processor architecture. So it made virtualizing those products pretty easy because if I'm running a Windows x86 computer, I can run a Windows x86 virtual machine, no problem. Now, Apple, though, has been kind of on the cutting edge, and they developed their own processing architecture known as Apple Silicon. It's based off of ARM. ARM instead of uh, the x86 architecture. And what that means now is if you want to run a virtual machine on one of these new Apple devices, it may or may not work. So in order to run natively a virtual machine, the operating system has to support that new architecture, which isn't very common. Um, it's not currently possible to do like emulation of Windows or things like that. So um, you're pretty limited in terms of what can run. Um, it, Apple Silicon has been out for about a year now, and there's finally some products that are coming out that make this process a little bit easier, but there's still going to be some limitations, and I wanted to talk about some of those. Uh, so for those of you that are mostly Windows users, such as myself, you know that there's things like VMware Workstation and VirtualBox or Hyper-V. There's a lot, of, a lot of really good free and paid options out there to run virtual machines. Uh, but on Mac OS, typically you have either VMware Fusion uh, or Parallels. And both of these vendors, they do have products and betas out that allow you to run VMs on the new Apple Silicon devices. That being said, both of these products are, 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 are not free. They both cost you know, a couple hundred dollars. So there is an investment involved. Um, so that being said, you know, typically what I tell my students is if you think you might have to run virtual machines often, I typically would recommend them getting a Windows computer because it's going to run more smoothly. There are some free options for running these. Uh, and generally, Windows devices are a little bit cheaper. That being said, I totally understand the appeal of Apple's Mac OS. Um, the devices are, are really fast and power efficient. And there's, there's a lot of cool quality of life features built into Apple's uh, ecosystem. So Apple devices are great, and they're fine for IT work. Uh, I would say they're, they're great for IT work where you connect to external systems. So if you're like remoting into AWS or connecting to uh, an ESXi server or something like that, then that's good, a good choice. But not, not that great of a choice yet if you want to run a local virtual machine. So I played around with both the VMware product and the Parallels product. I was not able to get the VMware product to work correctly. Um, I spent like maybe 15 or 20 minutes trying to get a Windows virtual machine up and running, and I kind of gave up and then moved to the Parallels option, which I actually did have a fair amount of good luck with, and I was able to get a virtual machine up and running. So I'll walk you through installing a VM on here. Um, first, what I already did already was I downloaded and I installed Parallels Desktop version 17 and beyond supports uh, running uh, Windows inside of this new M1 environment. So I have that downloaded and I'm, I, I can launch it and we can create um, a new virtual machine. Okay. So when you create a new virtual machine, you immediately get this message about M1 chips. So again, most traditional operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, even Linux, they were designed to run in the x86 processor architecture. This is an older architecture that has a really good, uh, a really good uh, compatibility. Uh, because it's been around for so long, but it's not that power efficient and it's difficult to scale. So Apple has developed their own processor that uses ARM. ARM has been around for a while, but it's been more so used for mobile devices, things like cell phones or low power devices like Internet of Things or Raspberry Pis, those little microcomputers. And typically those devices would have kind of more specialized operating systems. That being said, ARM is finding its way more and more into like consumer devices that are used for like desktop purposes. So laptops, traditional desktop computers and all that other stuff. And Microsoft, Apple, and a lot of the Linux vendors as well, um, they're producing operating systems that can run on ARM, which is great. But even if you have an operating system that supports ARM, such as Windows, there's a Windows ARM version that works, uh, the applications generally also need to support it as well. So there are some applications that may run fine in your virtual machine and others that might not. And you just have to be aware of that and be prepared to deal with some quirks with those incompatibilities. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue and I'll show you some, some things to look out for. So first off, if you want to set up a Windows virtual machine, you need a Windows 11 ISO file. This is a virtual DVD that you would uh, use to install the operating system on here. Now, you might be thinking, okay, like I've used Windows 11 before. I have that ISO file sitting on a flash drive. 
But you need to step back and think, okay, the processing architecture on my desktop computer that I built that has like, you know, an AMD processor in it is different than this device. And that DVD, that ISO file that you have is not gonna work. You need the ARM version of Windows 11, a different ISO file. So fortunately, uh, Parallels allows you to download it right here by clicking this button and it's gonna grab it automatically off of the Microsoft website, which is great. If you have an ISO file, you can just click on here and you can select it. Uh, in addition to, you can see some common Linux distributions that also support the ARM processor architecture, which is great. So things like Kali Linux, Debian, and you can even download a, a, a Mac OS VM as well. So if you wanna run Mac OS inside of Mac OS to test out some Mac OS app, you can definitely do that. So there's a lot of really cool options, but remember though, um, this processor architecture is different and while the operating system may feel familiar, uh, the apps may not be compatible. So I click continue. Um, I'll do my Windows 11 ISO file that I previously selected. I'll do the Windows 11 Pro license. Continue. And I'll sure I'll keep this name. You can change the virtual machine name if you'd like. And what's really cool about this is it's going to automatically install Windows, configure Windows, and I don't have to touch anything. Um, this is going to happen. This will take about five or so minutes. Uh, the first step is to stage the operating system, which is essentially going to take that ISO file and copy those files onto the virtual machine hard disk. That'll take about two or three minutes. After that is done, this machine is going to reboot, and then it is going to essentially start the configuration process. So it's going to create the user account automatically, which is pretty cool. And it's then going to set up the machine and it's gonna essentially just drop me straight into the desktop. So as this is going, I wanna talk about a couple of things that are happening here. So first off right now, this installing Windows. If you were to manually install Windows like on a, on a, on a computer you had built, for an example, uh, you would have to manually go through and select the hard drive you wanna install it on, what version of Windows you want. Uh, Parallels is taking care of all that for us, which is great and just adds some quality of life features. But just be aware if you're actually installing Windows on a real computer, you're going to have to select some of these things manually. And this is now what, is, what it's doing is it is essentially taking, that, 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 taking the data off of that ISO file, that virtual DVD, and copying it onto the hard disk. Then next, after that, it's going to restart and it's going to start configuring Windows with a user account. And again, typically, if this was a manual installation I was doing on like a regular computer, uh, I would have to go through and create a user account, set a password, all those other things. But Parallels is going to take care of that for us and automates all that. And I want to talk a little bit about automation. So in big organizations or even small and medium-sized businesses that have you know dozens of computers, it would take a lot of time and effort to manually install Windows on every single computer. So IT offices will oftentimes automate this. There are some tools that are available that can do this. So Microsoft's Intune, which is a cloud service, can do that, or Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager. They have a lot of those cool things. And the process that is responsible for customizing your Windows install is known as SysPrep. And if you've worked at a company or been to you know, a school, um, you might notice like, hey, there's a, a custom background or hey, like the control panel is locked down or there's like some, you know, some different settings. And those settings can all be set um, during the installation process in this thing known as SysPrep. And that all happens during here. So this is automated and it's really cool that it's automated, but it's not unique to Parallels. Anybody can do that if they have the right tools. But if you're gonna install like it manually on your home computer, you'd have to man manually step through and create a user account and all that stuff. Kind of like if you bought a computer from Best Buy and you're setting it up um, at home when you had, after you had purchased it. So I'm gonna pause this video for now and I'll resume it once the installation is done, probably in about five minutes or so. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so it was about less than five minutes and now I've, I've not touched anything and I dropped this straight into the desktop. It says installation complete. So I'm gonna click continue. And as you can see, this looks very similar to Windows 11 uh, because it is, but there's gonna be some differences here I just wanna point out. So first off, if I go into system here, you're gonna notice it says that it is running on an ARM virtual machine. And then if I scroll down under about, you're gonna see that the processor is detected as, where did it go? It says somewhere on here, uh, processor Apple Silicon. So just be mindful of that because certain applications are not gonna run correctly. Um, so yeah, this is like regular Windows. You can download and install kind of whatever you want. So I'll give you an example. One common tool we use in our class is like a Nmap. Or just a common tool I use in my security classes. And uh, you can download Nmap and this one works just fine. So um, definitely test out your apps. Uh, some apps may work fine. Uh, some are gonna cause issues. Windows is getting better at trying to support some of these applications I found. So 
Uh, as an example, I don't know if Nmap actually says that it officially supports the ARM architecture, uh, but Nmap seems to work fine, which is great. So test out your applications, I would say, early. Uh, things like you know video games and things like that that are like more massive applications or maybe even like the Adobe apps, uh, you might run into some issues with those. It depends again on the software vendor. And I know one thing that I usually struggle with as an instructor, like I don't have access to an Apple device regularly. Uh, this one in particular was a special favor. This is on loan for me for about a week or so, so I could test out this stuff. Uh, so I'm not an expert with this stuff with that with Apple devices. So if you ask me, like, hey, uh, can uh, Mac OS uh, emulate or run Windows 11 with this specific app, I'm going to say, I, I probably don't know. I know Nmap works because I've tried it, uh, but you're going to have to test these out kind of on your own. And so again, I'd recommend just going through, installing what you typically would use, and then launch it. And you'll notice, again, there's some differences here because not only do we have program files, program files x86, but on the ARM version of Windows, you have this ARM directory for the ARM specific applications. Uh, Nmap, you'll notice, is an x86 directory. And I'm stable to run it, so I'll launch the, the GUI version of it. Um, and it works fine, and I can try running a scan. And let's try. And it's going to work just fine. So test out your apps. That's my best advice. Uh, if you think you might need to run virtual machines regularly, uh, maybe consider picking up you know, a Windows laptop instead. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see. I'm hoping eventually I can actually get my hands on uh, an M1 device or an Apple Silicon device more permanently so I can test this stuff out as, uh, as improvements are made, because it is getting better. I remember when uh, Parallels released the, their first version of this, I think about a year ago, um, it was definitely way more buggy, at least that's what I've heard than uh, it is nowadays. So yeah, that's it for this video. Kind of keep it short and sweet just to show you some differences. Um, but yeah, good luck to all of you out there with these Apple Silicon devices that are trying to run virtual machines. I'm curious to know how your experiences are, so feel free to let me know, and I'll talk to you later.